five, four. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I am Jeff Burlingame, joined with my co-host Paul Glass, and we also have Neil Dalhov on the show. He is a uh, store store manager. I'm sorry. You are yeah, store manager, fishing manager, whatever you want to call me there. Yeah. Store, I got to get the position right. See, so store yeah. manager. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and that is at the Painted Trout, which is located in Dexter, Michigan. So a fly fishing guy by our own hearts. We're going to talk all sorts of cool stuff. But if you're a bass fisherman, if you're a conventional fisherman, don't turn away just yet because we will be talking about some stuff that you will appreciate. Trust me. Uh, before we get into that, if you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Hit that five-star rating. Drop us a comment, if you will, to help us improve that show. Uh, and you can always find us on Instagram, Facebook, at Burley Fishing, or on YouTube, Burley Fishing. Without further ado, let's get rolling, Paul. All right. We always start the episode off with the, we call it the question of the week, but we have a theme lately. So I am, I am a sports guy. I enjoy watching sporting events in general. Because of what's going on right now, we do not like get... We like the sport. We do not get March Madness, which is unfortunate. So what we did was we made a bracket of fishing items that someone might take with them when they go fishing. And we ranked them, and then we're pitting them against each other. So I'm going to give you two items. I'm going to list out these two items. And then the the idea is, like, let's say you're you're in a boat, you're in a kayak, or you're packing up your vest, and you're like, okay... I've either hit my weight limit or my capacity limit, and I can only pack one of these two things. I have to throw the other one in the, in the garbage. So here we go. And then you have to obviously select this one. Then we'll, we'll each give our perspective. Thank you for being here because now we have a tiebreaker. Typically, it's just Jeff and I fighting to the death, but now we have we have a referee. So the first one, it's a little bit, a little bit of a little bit of a tight seating. It's a it's a coming in seating number ten is the net. Good old net. That can be okay. a boat net. If you're in a boat, that can be the uh, the old trout net if you've got it magnetized onto yourself. Then you've got this going against number 12, which is the, the good old buff. Sun protector buff. Oh. Yeah. Ever so necessary during these times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For me, that's, that, that's an easy one. Uh, in, in most almost every case, I'm going to pick the buff. Uh, oh. See, I, I thought that was going to go the other I way. I thought you were going the other way, you too. You have a net right behind you. <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, well, may, yeah, and it stays there. No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> You know, nets are useful for sure, 100%, mm -hmm. right? But the buff serves purposes that I, that, that I can't achieve with anything else. I can always reach down into the water and grab a fish with my hand, right? Now, I might have to, I might have to fight it a little harder or a little longer, I should say. Um, but buffs for me for for no other reason than bugs, right? Yeah. Bugs, sun, obviously, <laughs> coronavirus in these times for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, buff. No, didn't didn't really even have to think about that one. Mm. Jeff, uh, I'm a buff as well because I do have a net. And I don't even use it for pike anymore. <laughs> like it literally, it sits behind my seat. I, I like installed the, uh, the boondocks landing gear, which has like that track mount right behind my seat, which is legit for the kayak. And I have a little net holder. Don't use it. I usually like throw the net. I'm like, why are you in my way? And it's like attached to the kayak. So that's fine. But <laughs> I would say buff for sure. I wear it almost every single 99.9% .9 of trips. Um, I, I have one in the truck. Yeah, it's very important to me. Absolutely. It's the first time we're going to, I almost want to just say net. Upset. I just want to say net to like, <laughs> to like be contrarian. But this I is can't. bug spray versus pliers all over again. <laughs> oh God. Oh, that I didn't, I haven't, I haven't heard you guys talk about that one. I, that had to be oh. interesting. That's, that's tough. See, to me, Pliers, it's a, I use it for so many different things, and there are scenarios where I'm just really always glad I have had them. To me, it's funny you mentioned bugs with the buff because I I usually have bug spray with me, but if it came down to it, yeah, I'm ditching the bug spray in a heartbeat, and I got I got slaughtered over that one. <laughs> it's true. Where would man, you be on that, Neil? That's tough, man. I I got a hard time with bugs. I really do, but. Uh... Do I have my nippers with me? 
See, that's the thing. It's like everyone wants to like, ooh, can I use the but same thing if? but slightly different? No, 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 no. You're going without. I gotta. If you're gonna Michigan, bite, you have to bite everything. If we're in Michigan, I gotta take bug spray. Uh, yeah. That's especially Dude. if we're in the UP, right? So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and that's I, that was the that is the valid argument. If you're in like northern Michigan, the absolute last thing you want to be dealing with is that crap. It's right. impossible. Like, I, I want to have a good time on the water, and if there's <laughs> anything preventing it, it's bugs and the sun. So it's like, if I can prevent that in some way. So bug yeah. spray was my call for sure. Well, so let me say this. The, 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 the bug spray that I use is one of my favorite products. No, this is not a plug. We do not sell it. <laughs> uh, it's just one of my favorite things, and I will not go anywhere without it. Uh, so we all know that, that, that DEET is not good for your stuff, right? So, um, <laughs> what I try to, to use find stuff <laughs> like your, your waiters, sunglasses, you this, right? Your leaders, you get any, all things, anything, yeah. right? Anything yeah. that you spent money on in my shop, deep, 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 right? So, you hate I, to see it fall apart, <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's the easiest way to make your waiters not, not waterproof anymore, especially if you get it on a seam, like you know, game over, yeah. Um, yep. Fly line? Oh man, don't get it on fly line. Toast. Oof. You, you can almost watch it disintegrate. It, it turns <laughs> into like, like paste. Yeah. Uh, so no, I use this stuff called McGillicuddy's. It's a wax. It's all natural. Oh, yeah. It smells like lemon and you know, kind of like a citronella candle that you can wear. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Just scrubbing a citronella candle under your armpits. <laughs> like, right? Let's go. It smell. It smells great. You don't have to worry about it, and it it. Honest to God, I, sw- I swear it works better than 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 deep. I just wrote it down because I feel like my wife is now going to be going for that. Yeah, all day. Awesome. And it I, comes I, in a sweet tin. You know, it's kind of oh, like hipster, can't go like, wrong. you know, high class stuff. And then I can hide my chew in there when it's empty. I love it. <laughs> it's a perfect tin. <laughs> Dude, I gotta I gotta make the switch. I've heard of that before. I've never used it, but yeah. I've been using like this bullfrog, which is like sunscreen plus bug spray, which has got to be just, like, rotting Acid. to my soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're taking a year off your life every week. Yep. Yeah. But that's Sorry. all right. It's, it's the years at the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> those yeah. aren't important, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what do those matter? <laughs> right. You're going to so, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So we do, we usually do two. So this one's a little bit easier. We started with the tougher one. This is a further, again, I did all the rankings. So if you have a gripe with the rankings, too bad. Uh, I went number four, number four, cell phone versus number 14. And this is way down for me because I've never used one ever. Fish gripper. Oh, oh, wow. That's a really easy one for me. I, you wouldn't catch, you wouldn't catch me dead with a fish gripper. See? With, yeah. Nope. I, so I, I take that back. I've got one, right. But I grip the net with it. <laughs> i'm not yes. you know you give me a big pike maybe i'll stick it in its mouth but even that i don't i don't feel good about it if i'm throwing it back if i'm throwing it back that is right, right? but ooh, i don't know yeah that's easy so i gotta have the cell phone i got i gotta have it i know photograph that, that for the pictures stupid. right yeah. yeah otherwise they're just alleged fish as paul would yeah. know <laughs> yeah you didn't, okay you didn't catch that fish unless it's on the ground dude i i okay yeah so <laughs> That that could be a whole. That's our next podcast episode right there. We're gonna talk about the gram. No, I, <laughs> I had I got I got, I had I was fishing with a friend. I caught, I was trolling, uh, in my kayak on Lake St. Clair, and I caught in, in the midst of a bunch of people fishing for walleye. I caught a really nice muskie. Nice. And it was sweet. It was sweet. It was sweet. And uh, I felt vindicated because everyone was like laughing at me in their boats, trolling back and forth. And I'm like paddling my my can off, trying to, you know, keep it steady. And I reel in this musk and I'm like, what's up, losers? And then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was doing. And then my buddy had a GoPro. And so, you know, he, he gets a picture of it. And I'm like, sweet, because I didn't get my phone out. I'm like, because he took the picture with a legit camera. Fish goes away. Awesome experience. Two weeks later, I'm like, hey, you want to send me that picture that you took with your GoPro? Yeah, the laptop that he loaded it on, dead. Oh, no. I kid you not. And so now I'm like, no. now it's always a legend. Right. <laughs> I, think I, got, I think I got the, I think I actually got the picture. 
I think five years later. And it's all grainy and trash, which makes me yeah. really upset. But it's there. I I have it. So it's it's like it's like a GoPro Hero Three oh, Silver same. Edition image capture. It's great with a, with a scratched <laughs> lens and fog inside. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. for years it, it was just like, like it looks like all... it was. <laughs> it definitely looks like it was taken there, like through. Like the oh, Twilight I'm Zone sorry. or a black hole, and someone tried to take a picture. Yeah, Paul would tell the story, and we would all go like, "Oh, cool, let me see <laughs> oh, the picture." <laughs> and he'd be like, "Well, you see, the thing is," and we'd be like, "Oh, see, <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go." So yeah, great. number four phone wins hands down. Jeff, you're a fish gripper guy, though, no? Not not like no. traditional fish, but for weighing fish. Uh, okay, yeah. So if fish gripper equals the weighing of the fish. I'm still going to say phone because I mean, honestly, there's a lot of, so like a lot of kayak tourneys right now are more like uh, photo and measure inches measurement. So we could do length instead. Weight isn't, isn't that important anymore. And I don't, I don't do tournaments for like bag weights. So I don't care as much. And at this point I'll just lift the pike out of the water. So again, net grippers, not as important to me anymore. <laughs> I'll definitely say the phone because if I, like I literally run YouTube, social media, and this podcast, like the phone is so important. Right next to that GoPro, I have to have one or both of those things. Otherwise, did I even go fishing? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be the next episode. Yeah. Also, <laughs> we didn't mention at all the safety. Oh yeah, well yeah, For right. Sure. I guess that matters. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be careful. Um, you know, I've got I, there. There's a there's an iPhone sitting at the bottom of of oh, no. up at uh, uh, West Delhi. On the, oh, on I was the, just on, there. Yeah, yeah, I lost it. Uh, I lost it in September. Um, and we went back a couple times looking for it because the water was <laughs> deep. Um, uh, but literally tomorrow, I should have this thing coming that 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 kind of like lanyards your 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 phone your your waiters or wherever wherever you want something for sure it's called, yeah. called a koala a uh, koala okay yeah um so i'll do a gear review on that when you guys know i'm literally <laughs> yeah. writing it down right now i've seen a few i've seen one that was like the rogue gripper or something too and then yeah the koala we'll check that out yeah good idea man because paul and i like we, we never leash phones i uh, sunglasses and like the number of times we've looked at each other as we both almost threw them into the water has been so many like i saw paul just got a pair of costas we went fishing on a lake he had them on his head and he just like laughed or shouted at this guy and they flipped down the back of his head and i was like no from like 50 feet away <laughs> and and they landed on his seat he was so dang lucky but like Huge. we have chums and and, and and like the the wire for your sunglasses we just never use them even with the costas it's like ah, eh, i don't i don't like yep. them <laughs> yeah they're uh, annoying yep yeah the the phone I'm lanyard with every smart. pair of sunglasses i get and then i end up never using them i'm like yeah i'm gonna use them this time <laughs> no <Never. laughs> i will say too with the phone i the first fish i ever caught fly fishing was a bluegill and I was standing in probably, I don't know, three and a half feet of water. And I went to take a picture of it. And I totally dropped the phone in the water. And this was like an iPhone like five or six or something. So it was not waterproof. Uh, and I, I dropped my phone. It was shot. So I get back to my apartment. I, my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, she was like desperately trying to contact me. And I was very chill about the whole thing. Cause I was like, ah, she knew I was fishing. I'm sure she'll figure out that like, I probably ruined my phone. Like that's like a standard thing that happens all the time. Right. Definitely didn't drown and die. <laughs> yeah. She, she assumed that I filled up my waiters and that I was dead. <laughs> and so she <laughs> called literally every person that knows who I am. Who's Act, who's either phone or Facebook she yeah. had access to <laughs> and like it was she called a friend of mine who's in California Not I think close. I got a call you got a oh, call I remember gosh. that yeah I remember that it was yeah. like oh my god she's freaking out man I'm like what happened I was like so, he's fine <laughs> I'm, dr I'm drinking beers in my apartment it's like 11 30 midnight and her brother who lives like two miles away like rolled by I was like knocking on my window like 
Hey, are you alive? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. All right, cool. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We laugh about it now, but I almost yeah. uh, I almost died twice because she almost killed me. Yeah. I was like, how? I don't. Know. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> right. What do you do? Absolute classic. So yeah, phone can actually. It's a good thing that most of the phones are waterproof now. That's all I'd say about it. Right. Um. All right, so the, the next thing we usually do on the show is the weekly check-in. This is the what have you, what have you been up to this week? I will say I have um, I did I actually went to Del High. I have to I would normally not mention a spot that I go to, but that's a very public place, and that's also yep. um, a place that you just mentioned. But that was pretty funny. And I took right. the took the fly rod out, and I was actually I was going for smallmouth, but I was testing out the uh, some flies that I had made up last year myself. Um, I caught zero fish, which I, I am not going to ascribe to my flies because I think they're good. They got down, which was important. The flow was absolutely nuts. Like walking upstream was not possible in the water. You could not do it. Even when was in, it? This was Saturday. Oh, okay. So like six days ago. Right. There were guys in kayaks doing the rapid thing. They're doing the rapids underneath the you know, underneath the bridge. That's where it was. That's how. That's how. That's how. That's how calm it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's how calm it was. Yeah. So calm. Um, okay. Pristine. It was, it babbling was, brook. <laughs> it was brutal. It was brutal. Just a trickle. Yeah, I had just I had numb I had numb toes as well. It was cold. But. I got them out there, and I so I'm gonna put them up. So if you can see, this is the this is the fly that I was putting out. I don't know. Can you guys see oh. this? Are we there right now? So this is a basically a mop fly, which if you took the tail off, would look like that. Yep. Weighted head, and then I've got lead wrap underneath, and then you got oh, yeah. some, you got a big you got a big little bit of marabou, and then you got some flash boo underneath of it. So that c- condenses down into that guy right there. Dude, this thing is, it gets down. Even with all that, even with all the light material on it, that thing gets down. Yeah, it's basically, it's my color. I've got white, black, olive, and then I've got three different sizes. And then I did feathers, marabou, and then the rubber legs instead. So I was trying, trying them all out to see how they go. I was not mad about it. Rubber legs are where it's at, man. That's my like, that's like my number one favorite tie material. If I can put rubber legs on something, uh huh. Probably gonna. <laughs> yeah. So nice. that's what I was up to this week, fishing wise. Okay. Neil, I know that the painted trout is not open right now because of what's going on. At least the shop is not open, which I know is painful. Um, I am pulling for you guys too because I know they're trying to get out that uh, small business focus loan out this week. Um, I'm pulling for you guys big time. You guys are my local shop, so I'm there all the time. And I mean, it's 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 really important. I think that's really you guys are shops like yours are critical to to communities like the Dexter, um, Chelsea area, which is like our area. So so I am really pulling for you guys because I know you're not open right now. I know you're still selling online, so obviously we want to plug the shop and you know buy online. Um, but yeah, other than you know hustling and trying to keep the shop rolling um what have you been up to the last week or two well i i I appreciate your your support here first of all and you know giving me an opportunity to plug the shop because yeah you know it is difficult we don't we don't have our doors open and um you know we we don't have the the walk-in traffic and people just kind of walking by Uh, but i would like to say for anybody that's listening that's a, a customer of the shop uh, I really want to thank you. We've had we've had a pretty a pretty significant uptick in in online business, and people have really been uh, really been showing support. Um, and I can tell some of that some of these purchases are stuff you know it's stuff that these people don't really need right now, um, and they're you know throwing us you know throwing us a solid here and there, and that really uh, that's really great to see. Um, but yeah, we've been uh, we've been working filling orders and. Uh, trying, trying as best we can. We're, we're a pretty lean crew to begin with. So, um, you know, we'll be, we'll absolutely be able to weather the storm and, um, and come out on the other side. And, you know, hopefully there's some new things for us on the, on the other side of this. We're working, uh, working on the facility of the store, working on uh, kind of expanding the fly shop and expanding the, uh, the apparel shop a little bit. So, um, 
stay tuned for some cool things coming there for sure. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna plug we're gonna plug away at that one because I want I want people to know too what you guys are selling because I think a lot of people when they go into a fly shop have like no concept whatsoever of what's actually in there. Like I cannot tell you how many times I've walked by like an Orvis shop and been like, why is all that stuff in there? Like if you're not if you're not a fly shop frequenter. So we will definitely hit that. So any any fishing any fishing that you that you've done the last couple of weeks. You know nothing nothing crazy. So I live out I live out in the Waterloo Rec area in Chelsea. So um, you're in my backyard, man. Yeah, Lake Winnawana is in my backyard. Oh, so. that's where I'm gonna be duck hunting. Wait, the the big one, the big uh, okay, not because there's a little one right behind it too. Right. No, I'm I'm on the big one. I'm right right across from the boat launch. Um, so yeah, come come Saturday. I mean, Pike opens back up on Saturday. Yeah. Um, you know, there's oh. that's where I'm gonna go. I don't know if there's any in there or not, but um, oh, they're you know, in there. Just launch from the backyard. But you know, there's a lot of little lakes out here that I've been going out in the canoe every once in a while. I've been I've been hitting perch lately on the fly, which is not something that I'm I'm used to I'm used to getting into. What uh, rod? three weight 10 foot three weight 10 foot wow yeah, yeah. I, it's my my european nymphing rod but but i took sure. it out there and um man perch on a three weight that's it, that's fun man if i was keeping them i would have limited out easily wow. and that's <laughs> that's so i'm gonna i'm gonna get to that too because i that is how that's how i got into fly fishing we're gonna we're getting into that topic too nice that's jeff right. Jeff, I know you had a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a day. I, I went conventional. Um, I have not. So I do fly fish. I haven't been able to fly fish in a while. Just the 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 flow and the overall <laughs> depth of the rivers uh, around me where I have like, I usually fly fish like the flat river uh, by me, which when the water height is good, like I've taken Paul there. We've gone conventional there with ultralights and uh, we fly fished it too. And I mean, it's just, it's a dang good time. You will just plug smallmouth all day long. Uh, I didn't get to hit it even once last year. So it was awful. But I did go conventional this last week and I uh, went on the kayak and went on the Grand in one of my favorite spots, pretty close to my house. And I caught a uh, three. 0.7 pound smallmouth and a 3.5 pound smallmouth like yeah. back to back um we we're i was fishing like they weren't doing anything for a while i i got bit off within five minutes by a pike and i came back to him later uh and then i started like fishing the bottom just flipping hook with like a heavy heavy flipping weight uh, like three quarters an ounce and caught the three seven on a craw and then kind of just floated down and was like fishing a square bill caught the three five and then another like a large mouth so it's doing multi-species day and then fished a ned uh for a little while and caught the pike that bit me off right at the beginning of the trip it's pretty sweet he's like a really pale pike too it's like a really weird color pattern it was interesting um not a big boy but he's just hanging out by this log they're always there there's like always like I don't know, dozens of pike, like right in this one little spot. It's a really fun area to go. It's like right where the thor uh, thorn apple feeds into the grand. Um, mm -hmm. So you can also go up the thorn apple to the dam, which the smallmouth haven. Yeah. Like the, for the first portion of that, like there's, uh, you know, just tons and tons of cover and trees and stuff. And like, you can just smash them. I did see, this wasn't on the video. It didn't show up, but I wanted to talk about it because it was so awesome. Uh, so some big fish it was a good time. Multi-species day. But there was a large G that literally shot out of the water to eat something like two feet. And I was just like filming and reeling and talking a little bit. I look over, I just see whoosh, like shoots out like a rocket drops back in. And I just like freaked out. You saw it was so good. You saw live the what what probably every kid had like for the last 20 years, like the T-shirt that every kid had, <laughs> which is like a bass eating a dragonfly like. 19 inches off the water it was just epic. you had you had that moment in epic. real life so good there was also <laughs> like 
something dude something almost made me jump out of my boat just like some giant turtle or fish way up shallow like on the edge of the river uh just like as i was as i was drifting fishing that square bill i like cast next to it and it just went like blew up and just caught me off guard i almost jumped out of the boat so it was a it was a pretty overall like exciting trip i was happy to have that i haven't been on the river yet this year so that was really like the first productive trip there and I've, uh, before that trip, I had only caught one smallmouth. I went on the flat river once and I caught one smallmouth on that trip. Um, they haven't been doing too much up here. They've been pretty quiet, but up here is Grand Rapids area. I was just going to ask over, yeah. over here. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay. West, West cool. side guy right here. Uh, yeah, I usually fish like, um, the, the grand, the flat, the thorn apple, uh, a lot. And then I have like, a a nice little puddle in my backyard that I fish a lot that, it's like a really good little lake. I love it. I love it. I go there like 90% of the time just because it's so good. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, it produces, man. So well, if you, if you have Winnie Wana in your backyard. So, Jeff, Winnie Wana is one of the lakes we went on that sum, last summer yeah, when you like, came out. Familiar. That was the big one that had the suit. We went, we went early in the summer, and the weeds were like way, 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 way up. And we fished it hard for probably four hours. Jeff, you think yeah. we were there for four hours? Was that the the Pike Lake multi-day where June we got, trip? Yes, yes. And yeah. uh, what's his face had the boat out, and he took it into. Is it? It connects to Sugar. Uh, yeah, it's real close. It, it's right across the road from Sugarloaf. Yes. Yeah. And so. Yeah. So we went there, and I we got skunked in a big way, in a big <laughs> way. No, Jeff got you. Jeff caught a Pike like in the first 20 minutes and then yeah, the rest like of the day right off the bat on a dead. spinner i i got bit off i i lost a few like war eagle spinners i was like cool they just, just throw my money in the water and watch it float <laughs> away that's cool like i got bit off by something big like once or twice on that trip but yeah we had a pike right in the beginning and then we just uh i think my buddy uh marcus actually caught a few bass on just like a weightless um it's probably like a bug pattern, some some sort of creature bait. It's just throwing weightless by some lily pads. It was but difficult. Like, everything else sucked really bad, and and I was was I the only one? So they they had a mud boat, so they were fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they had the high prop. Um, you were paddling, I was pedaling. I had a horrible time. I had a horrible time because <laughs> the weeds the were so high. <laughs> it's it's pre- it's awful. I you yeah. know, we've got to we've got to we've got to cut lily pads every year if we want to have a path. Oh, the path out most of the time we just we just skip it and i drive the, the you know the canoe to the boat launch mm-hmm. uh, even if even though it's in my backyard it's you know because it's an impoundment it's not a real lake correct you know? yeah. so it's yep. all really really shallow um, and it gets weedy really fast i mean there's i'm it's not even may and i'm already looking at looking at lily pads coming up it's <laughs> It's, wow. it's bad. If there were light out, I'd show you. I'm looking at it right now. It's it's. It is. Bad. It isn't. It. I've, I. That was the first time I'd ever fished that lake, and I know there's pike in there. I'm. Mm-hmm. I know they're there. So I took the fly rod out, and it was like all I could hit were holes, like in the weeds, like in the root. Re- Cause I. Don't, is it ale white? What What's the really really tall one? The super long one that comes. It's like they're like tubes, and they go from the bottom all the way to the top. I don't know. I guess I don't know my vegetation that well. I don't there know. were there were holes in there and I was fishing those and I was trying to get down like down way deep so I had sink tip line and I was getting way down but of, like other than that and I was just roll casting like from one end of it to the other and they're like 12 to 20 foot just holes and that was the only thing you could that was the only thing I could do I had there was nothing else it was brutal yeah, but it's the, they're the, there. The sweet spot's <laughs> going to be here in the next, I think, in the next two weeks. You know, because right now the vegetation's there, but it's not high. It's there just it's it's just right to protect. You know, give some some protection in the shallows for the for the the bluegill and the perch, and then have them, you know, come up come up on those drop offs and those depth changes. That's what I want. You know, <laughs> it's it's I think it's about to light up here on Winnawana. I think. Oh, for sure. Nice. Oh, for and I will be out there duck hunting in the fall. Nice. So I, hopefully I don't hit your house with any pellets. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's get into the uh, the show meat. So I'm gonna start with a we're gonna start with the uh, the softball 
Neil, tell us how how did you get into fishing? How did fishing become the the thing that you uh, that you that you got that was like your deal? Uh, you know, I've, I I grew up kind of conventional fishing. Um, I, I probably stopped conventional fishing when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, started to get interested in girls and whatnot. Um, <laughs> But I, I grew up I grew up on Gros Seal out in the in the Detroit River. So I grew up jigging for walleye in the in the Trenton Channel and in the Livingston Channel. Um, and I just kind of stopped, got out of fishing for a really long time. I was really passionate about it when I was young and um, Did you have a boat? The, what's that? You had a boat. Well, I had friends that had you know, I had rich friends that had boats. Smart deal. Good gross good deal. <laughs> Uh, but you know, for me, uh, I'm the kind of guy that, that has a lot, you know, throughout my life, I can look back and go, man, I've been in, into, and have done a lot of things. Uh, and one of those things I was, a, uh, I did custom motorcycles. So I used to build, build old, you know, seventies Japanese bikes into customs and sell them and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I was building I was building a B- old BMW for me. It was a, it was a project for me, and I was going to ride it from I was going to ride it from Ipsy, where my shop was, uh, to the UP, uh, and camp along the way, and you know take as many back roads as I could, many forest roads as I could, you know do that whole thing. Um, and in in kind of designing the bike and doing the research for the bike, I was like, well, you know, I should probably take a fishing rod with me. <laughs> and you know if you're if you're if you're trying to pack stuff on a motorcycle you got to pack you got to pack light small mm-hmm. minimalist right so something in my brain said you know that's that just sounds like a fly rod to me um and i started doing research on fly rods I've, and my my wife bought me one uh for christmas and that that that, that was it after that it was all over I mean, you guys know how it goes. So you base you basically chose well in wives. That's really the that was really the key. <laughs> so that's a testament to wives. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys know. She, she worked with me at the shop too. She's I did the, not know that. Yeah, she's the the store's operations manager. So oh, she, does, awesome. she does all the hard work at the shop. I was shop. about to say, so she does all the trying. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it were not for my wife, we we. we my job would be very, very difficult. I'm just waiting for her head to pop out, and she'd be like, "Damn straight." <laughs> <laughs> Solid plug. Solid plug. <laughs> well done. Um, so one thing I, I have to say, getting into fly fishing, if you are, I think most people when they think about fly fishing, they're thinking about like the 45 plus year old man in wool clothing uh, with a creel. And 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 casting a handmade bamboo rod out to you know uh, four inch trout right and, and like that you know top nothing but baby flies on top and and like that's it right that that actually not that there's anything wrong with that because that's sweet that's right. really there that's awesome but I I feel like there's a whole planet of fly fishing that people do not. Uh, ever get exposure to and it takes conventional guys like they like there's no perception of like not no there's very little perception of like badass fly fishing there's the <laughs> yeti yeti did a video uh on fishing for gts the gts man <laughs> it is one of i'm like yeah it's it and it's all fly fishing it's like one dude i think he's i can't remember where he's from but i want to say south africa but i can't remember but he I'll just never forget the video because the video was one, it was done like very modern, super cool. Yet a lot, yet he's kind of become like this like media machine of like making like cool videos and they, they well produced. The music was awesome. They get these dudes out there and these dudes are just slinging flies at GTs and hammering them. And it is like, like it, it, I wish they had done it with bass flies on top water or gigantic trout with mi- with mice on top water because like people don't realize like how cool that is and how easy it is. It's short casts, it's huge action and giant fish on what people think is light light tackle 
not light tackle. Super heavy duty, heavy, like heavy, heavy duty stuff. Yeah, and I just, like 100 pound fluorocarbon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you could tow your vehicle with like one of these things. And like, I don't think anyone's ever seen the real, like the saltwater heavy duty reels that people use that are like, I, I, I get it. Like they're not, they don't, I guess they don't, maybe people just haven't seen them. They, I think these things are bulletproof and they're, dude, you, you can crank with them. Yeah, you can. Yeah, like, I we're going to talk about some of the trips you've gone on, but like, I just, I have to get that out there that like, I know. So I started fly fishing with a five weight from Cabela's, the RLS 150 bucks for the whole package deal. And I was like, ah, just try this out. And the guy's like, what do you want to fish from? I'm like, I have no idea. I just want to figure this out. And it ended up, um, I just got a bunch, I got a bunch of like ants and, uh, like top water, like poppers. And I started catching bluegill trying to catch, whatever would you know catch and i realized like it's cheat codes if you want to catch bluegills and like you don't have to get you don't have to be able to cast at all like literally almost zero if as long as you know where the bluegill are or or it's any panfish and if it's some if it's early early summer late spring and you're on top water you 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 don't you can't you can't do it wrong and you would, it's cheat codes. Like you, if you want to catch to eat, like you're eating, it's period, the end. I keep one when we, when 100%. Jeff and I, yeah, when Jeff and I go on our trips, I bring the three weight now. Um, and I bring like just one little, like, like little tiny box full of like foam poppers. And I know that I'm catching lunch every day. 100%. I think to be, to be, fair to conventional fishermen it's just like it's it is a different planet it is such a different like concept of fishing which is why i think it's like hard for them to grasp the concept because i know it was for me so like i i got into fly fishing at least a year after you guys did because you and cooch picked up like the whole package from cabela's and you're like hey we, you know, we spent 500 dollars on fly fishing shit and it's so cool <laughs> and i was like wow that sounds terrible it sounds like really expensive and why are you doing that and i mean conventional fishing is not cheap so <laughs> i was nice. just at the time i was like well why, why would you do that it looks hard that's what i said i was like it looks hard it looks it hard does. i don't want to learn a different way to fish i already suck at bait casting at that time <laughs> i was like I don't get into this. <laughs> another thing to learn whatever but then I think, yeah, within like a year of you guys having that, I picked up the same Cabela kit, uh, Cabela's kit, and I was like, all right, let's, let's you know, let's, let's give it a shot. And I went out and we we went fishing a few times, and like I practiced casting. I was just trying to figure this thing out, and it was so so different. But it you pick it up pretty quick. Like it looks complicated, and I I mean, of course, there are more complicated casts and there's definitely ways to obviously master this craft over time but you can cast the thing and catch fish within like a trip i mean you know if you just play around with it a little bit so we just kind of messed around and then i i caught a few fish and like realizing the the difference once you get out there and actually have this thing this you know different style of reel and rod in your hand and like the difference of how the line carries the lure instead of lure carrying the line like once those concepts kind of like clicked it was it was all different and it, it's it just feels different and it's it's kind of nice i still definitely love conventional fishing i love you know bait cast spinning setups all day um but I mean, I fly fishing really grew on me. I don't know if I could quit any one of those three things. That's <laughs> what I'll say. Like, I love all of them, all the styles. And, you know, like Paul said, he always brings like the three weight, for example, but he has all his conventional setup. And like, I'll do the same. Uh, it's impossible, impossible for me to fly fish from my kayak with the pedals in the way. Like, I just get so mad. But like, if we usually, if we go on a bigger trip, I'll bring the waders and it's like, Hey, we're going to wade today. Let's go for that. And then I'll fly fish. But like, I'm not going to do it from my boat. He can do it from his boat. It's it, your setup on the boat is so like perfect for it. Cause it's just that open cockpit setup. There's nothing to really like get in the way. And I just have like pedals, uh, fish electronics and, yeah. and GoPro. And I'm just like, I'm not doing it, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it definitely grew on me. So, I mean, I'll just say for my conventional fishermen out there, like it's something where, if it looks 
too overly complicated or like that's that's an artistic style of fishing like it's not it's fun it's really fun uh and it's easy to pick up i mean obviously like anything else it takes ten thousand hours to master but it's easy to pick up and you'll catch some fish i mean and it's it's a lot of fun so i'd say try it the cabela's kit was 150 right Mm -hmm. like 150 and that was that was real rod line and i think a box of flies no flies false Mm. paid for those mine didn't have one i'm pretty sure mine came with like a little set of flies not that they were great but they'll catch fish Mm -hmm. uh and if not like then just go buy a couple flies like go to your local fly shop uh like the painted trap located in dexter michigan and (laughs) (laughs) go online right now (laughs) but uh but yeah just you know, ask the experts, right? That's, that's the, the the other big thing is like, and that's true for conventional fishing too. Obviously, like if you want to, you know, produce more fish, if you want to catch more fish when you're going to new waters, go find the closest fish shop, not Cabela's, not Dick Sporting Goods, the local shop and ask them what to do <laughs> and they will help you out and then buy stuff from them and it makes all the difference in the world. Well, so that, I was gonna, that's how I got into it, for sure. And I would, and I would say, Neil, like if someone comes in as like, I'm interested in fly fishing, I know that they catch fish and that's it. Like, how would you how would you guide that person? So that that person is that person's probably my favorite customer, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, to me, it's uh, this this conventional versus versus fly fly thing is uh and and moving from the conventional world to the fly world um it's really just not as complicated as 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 even some of the fly fishing companies in the industry would have you think it is (laughs) yeah you know which which just blows my mind like i don't understand why they wouldn't want to attract more 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 people by making it more more inclusive but you know the, the 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 sport has this uh, it can have this kind of air of exclusivity and, uh, you know, yeah, and, and, you know, look down your nose. Oh, oh the noses could not Pretent- be higher. Pretentious. <laughs> and, man, that, that happens even within the sport. I mean, don't oh, even yeah. get me started on how people look at Euro nymphing, which is one of my favorite ways to fish, right? So, you know, when someone comes in and they don't they don't know anything, the very, very first thing I tell them, is straight up you do not be overwhelmed by everything that i have for sale here right Mm -hmm. you can find a use for everything that i sell you don't need hardly any of it right Mm -hmm. you need you need a rod you need a line you need a reel right and you need a way to walk in the water or or be on a boat or or whatever you need access to the water but that's really that's really kind of it you throw some flies in there um you know, you got to you got to make it easy. There's, you know, I, I've, like I said before, I've done a lot of things in my life, which, which means that a lot of times in my life I've been new at something, you know, and I hate that feeling because I hate going into these shops, uh, and and feeling like an outsider, uh, because I don't know what's going on, right? So when someone comes to me, I try to apply that, knowing that you know if it was me walking in. I'd be kind of like, I'd be a little, might be a little anxious, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, you know, there's just no need for, there's just no need for, for any of it. It's just, it's just fishing, you know, and it's just a different way to do it. Uh, and, and for me, what's funny is I hear everybody talking about fly fishing being, you know, seeming complicated for me, the conventional, the conventional tackle just don't even get, I have no idea to where to even start with that. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's so many different things, especially with terminal tackle. That's where it, oh, yeah. that's where it gets me, right? The, the terminal tackle on a fly rod is you got a leader, you got some tippet, you might have two flies, you might have three, an indicator maybe, but all these different rigs that the conventional guys do, especially those crazy European carp anglers. Yes. Man, oh. <laughs> That's twice yeah. that has come up. That oh, came right? up on the last one too. And the I European mentioned carps. that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Well, <laughs> the U.S. doesn't do it. It's a huge, huge. What is it like? It start. It's like a real French Asian thing. Um, oh, at least it started. But yeah, anyways, that's I'm. The British. Why don't you mention that? Yeah, they, they, those things are like, man, they, they, they're almost sacred. Those fish. Okay. Yeah. It's really, it's really interesting. 
Um, and we're like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, for me, this though, thing. some of the craziest, craziest Instagram feeds I've ever seen are those European carp anglers. Right? Find, <laughs> yeah. those, find those tackle companies that sell those little, you know, carp balls. Yes. Um, and their Instagram feeds are insane. The fish that they, that they pull out. It's just. And the casts that they're doing are nuts. Yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> The whole thing, yeah. they've got floating tents and, yeah. and, and and rod racks and bells on. It's just crazy, man. It's like, I don't, I like, I, I don't know if you guys ever chased a carp on a fly rod, but. The best, I make, I, so when I do lures for, or lures, when I do flies for those, I just take, um, because you're, you're copying mulberries is what I'm trying to copy. Anything falling from, from underneath the tree. Uh, I just do pieces of cork. Uh, Sharpie. Oh. Dude, it's, it go. could not be easier. It can't sink, which is great. I don't have to worry about that. And dude, it looks and sounds, I think, I think, apparently, I've had success with it. And they're free if you drink wine. So. <laughs> free. free. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because that mold the water pretty hard. And then uh, that cork will. Pop. Yeah, okay. It'll pop. Yeah, man. Try that. Yeah. So if you if you were if if someone was coming in and, and you're kind of looking at them like, man, I do not want to make this person feel uh, apprehensive. Okay. What are you what are you what are you selling them? So I, let's I, assume they're a general I, dude. They've got like two hundred bucks that they're like, okay, this is what I can part with. Two hundred bucks, easy. I got. I mean, the uh, the best way to do it is what you guys did, right? You got a you got a starter kit. Now, you know, you can get starter kits from just about all the major fly rod manufacturers. They'll have a they'll have a good starter kit, and they'll be under two hundred bucks. Line rod leader, you know, get you out on the water, no problem. Um, if you if you got a little bit more, you know, I, I'm a I'm a big believer in you know, get the best that you can afford, right? Now that's not saying that a better a better rod or a better reel is going to make make you a better angler because it simply won't, right? Fact. It just, just, Instantly. <laughs> right. Let's just get that get that out of there. You know, I can I can tweak your game with equipment, right? But you know, I can't I can't cover anything up. You know, I can't make a good <laughs> angler or a good one with equipment and you know vice versa. It's you can't just buy a nicer gun and kill kill bigger deer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no that's exactly Wait. it <laughs> yeah. so if you're coming in if you're coming into the shop and you're and you're just you're just starting out uh the only the only way i'm selling you something expensive is if you tell me you want to buy something expensive then i'll okay. sell it to you for sure but you just don't you just don't you don't need it you really you really yep. don't need it now when you start when you start getting getting into targeting specific species and you know let's say all you want to do is target tarpon well you know yeah we're gonna we're gonna need to talk about <laughs> we're gonna need to talk about reels you know? yeah and you know there's there's a number of things that you know number of examples in that vein that, that i could give you but uh you just don't need to be overwhelmed you get get the basics go out there get the line wet put it in front of some fish and it's going to work. And the, 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 the best, the best thing you can do like you did is get out with bluegill, man. I mean, that's like, that's a gateway drug right there. It that's, totally is. What's yeah. that momentum too, right? It's like, you know, you're going to plug them. Yeah you, yeah. you just start feeling a fish on the end of that rod. It's like, it's a totally different ball game. But I mean, I, to that, I would even say like walk into a Cabela's dude and go down three aisles and tell me you're not overwhelmed by the friggin' options, <laughs> conventional fishing. Like, it's insane. The the Cabela's conventional section versus the fly section. There you go. Like go take a look, compare, contrast. It's I mean, there's uh, a rod for every species conventionally too. It's not just spinning and bait casting, you know? Um, so yeah. I like it. I appreciate your approach to it because I think that is something that a, a lot of people new to the sport are are very nervous about. Walking into a I know I was and still am like I still will go to a fly shop and be like oh gosh I hope like the locals aren't just wearing their waiters in the shop and they're gonna make me <laughs> feel bad <laughs> every every time like every time I walk in I'm like oh god because I mean I've 
to be fair, I've walked into at least one where I've been, you know, like, oh, I don't fit in here. I'm going to walk out now. But, you know, then I go into like a shop like yours, for example, like you're going to feel way more comfortable. So uh, to those shops that don't make people feel comfortable out there, cut it out. <laughs> Do <They're>, better. <laughs> well, it's and Jeff and I have talked about this a couple of times with uh, shops in general where it's like it. It's easy if you're a shop owner and most of the people you interact with are super experienced, right? Cause that's, that's what, that's typically, that's who you are going to be if you're, if you're a shop owner and it's very easy to just like be yourself. Um, you, you see a hundred people a day and most of them know what they're doing. They're coming in, they're buying whatever they're going to buy or whatever. Um, but to your point, Neil, earlier about like, why would you not want to bring people in? fly fishing i think to me is in the same vein as like deer hunting is right now there's not a lot of people who are like 15 16 years old who are like jacked up about deer hunting it's like it has become less and less and less of what it used to be where it was like you just grew up doing it and some of it is because there's just like a whole generation of people out there who did it their way and they're like well this is how you do it and like that's it but fly fishing and, and with fly fishing, that is traditionally like, yeah, we're targeting trout. Like if you buy a fly rod, you're targeting trout. Or, or if you're in the like Key West or whatever, like you're, you know, you're going for, you're going for gigantic, you know, sea monsters, but in the Midwest, <laughs> right. in in, in like the, in the, in the West coast, like not West coast, but like the Colorados of the world, like you're going for trout. And that's like the, that's like the, the generic, like the general, right. Like. Um, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> like be, what people to think. Be fair. Like, you get a nine foot. I was like, why'd you get you those? Like <laughs> yeah, it it <laughs> and and like a nine foot five weight is a sweet bass rod. Yeah. Yes, is. you should probably have an eight weight, but like it is like you can have like one if you're tying flies. The flies are easy. They're super easy and they're deadly. They're not that expensive because you only need a couple of different kinds, and like you're gonna do work and the cheapest setup that's durable is like the one that will work for you. There is so much fun to be had that I just feel like the fly fishing community, like is sort of, it feels almost like, um, woefully ignorant of like the fact that like it does, it's just how it feels yeah. to me sometimes. Like, it's just like most, most shot that now the Michigan shops on the rivers that we have, I mean, you guys know what it's like to have, I mean, you guys are super lucky. You got the, creek running right there um and you, and you have some of the the best fishing around um but you've got that other shop on the huron right where they they love their small mouth um and i just think it's really cool to see people who are like um walk into a small shop that person can set aside like every single person i talk to is a pro um and really be able to say like look i'm just gonna i want to put you behind an orvis clear water and i want you to just like bang away on whatever you can catch that's the only that's the only way someone's going to get into this sport right it's the only way is if you put him like you said okay i couldn't have put it better myself put him behind a clear water <laughs> right and let just let him let him hammer him yeah right? it's just, yeah. and and that's the beauty of the huron man i mean you know you can you can do that with smallies you can get out there and, and clobber them and if you're not clobbering smallies you're probably pulling in big fat bluegill <laughs> which you thought was a smallie <laughs> yeah. you saw, right? Pop. Pound for pound, best fighting fish out there. Yeah. Here we go. Right? 100%. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. Three weight, you are under you are under rod. You are under rotted. You, are, <laughs> you do not have enough stick. <laughs> yeah, man. They're they're fantastic. You 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 couldn't have you couldn't have put it better. Love it. So I have to ask this. How does somebody become shop manager at a fly shop? <laughs> uh you know, it actually was just kind of coincidence i you know i've i've worked in retail for uh 15 years now mm -hmm. um in various various uh stores positions industries. forms and functions yeah electronics tires you know you name it um but uh you know my my i was actually working in auto service i was a a, a, a service writer and um I just kind of decided one day I was not just kind of not into it anymore. This is not what I want to do. 
you know, it was a good job, great place to work, just not kind of not what I wanted. So I fortunately I was I was lucky enough. I had a little bit of savings. I just said, screw it. I I'm out of here. I'm gonna take two weeks off. Or I'm gonna go I'm gonna go spend two weeks on the Black River in northern Michigan. Yeah. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go get another job. You just pulled the ripcord. You're like, screw it. I, I that's, that's, that's so good. Pulled it. That's the best way to put it. That's um, so. While I was doing that, shortly after, I I, I kind of walked into the walked into the shop and, and I talked to Lauren, the owner, and she just offhand mentioned that she needed some help, and I was like, all right, let's you know let's do this. Um, yeah, there there you go. That was uh, almost two years ago now. Yep. So yeah, there you are. So, yeah, so take a big risk, pull the ripcord, go fish for two weeks, walk into a fly shop, ask for a job. <laughs> well, no, no, get get asked for a job. <laughs> Got it. Easy, uh, easy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why y'all aren't doing it. Come on, what go. what the hell, bro? <laughs> Touche. <Touché. laughs> what are you so, even? Doing? <laughs> so what do you think? Um, I'm gonna ask you the probably the e well. I'll ask you what I would consider to be the easier question first about working in a fly shop. What's the worst part about working in a fly shop? Honestly? <laughs> Careful. I, well, yeah, that's right. You're working with your wife. Uh... <laughs> so for me, honestly, this might sound weird, but the worst part of working at a fly shop is for everybody that I know, to think that my life is easy because I work at a fly shop. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And I'm not saying, listen, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting over here complaining or anything, you know, but you know, it's not, it's not all sunshine and, and lollipops. It's, it's retail. It's run a small business. Well, yeah, yeah small, small business, man. I mean, that's, you you got to dive into that a little bit. You got to you got to expound upon that because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who I feel like would do like lip service to this the idea of running a small business. It's like when you say like, "Oh yeah, it's it's difficult to like run a restaurant." Yeah, yeah. it's super hard. But like what what makes it so difficult? Cuz it's not like it is you devote your life to it. Yeah, it's you know, for, for, for me, uh, we're, so we're a retail store and we sell, we sell products and a lot of those products change with, with the season. Um, and there are trends just like in any industry. Um, and, uh, predicting and getting out in front of those, those trends and those waves, um, especially with the apparel side of the business, um, that can be that can be really difficult. Fortunately for me, my wife handles the apparel side. <laughs> um, Perfect. So uh, you know, fishing is a fishing is a little bit easier. Um, but the problem with fishing is that a lot of the a lot of the inventory is really expensive, and it's Especially stuff that you know, time materials. Oh God, yeah, Brutal. right. That's a whole that's a whole nightmare in and of itself. That mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. materials, but. You know, it's we a lot of the stuff we have is expensive and it doesn't move really fast. You know, mm -hmm. people aren't buying Winston rods every day. You Douglas know, rods do not fly off the shelves. They do not. You know, as yeah. good as they are, they you know that that's the thing about being in a community with with money and being in a sport like fly fishing is that a lot of people already have a lot of this stuff, right? And getting them to part with their money for new stuff, you really gotta you really gotta give them a, a good value proposition as to why they'd want it, um, mm -hmm. which is why the beginning angler is, is, you know, part of why the beginning angler is my favorite customer. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, a lot of times these guys that have been in the, in the fly fishing for a long time will stand here and just, they'll just stand there and talk to me and list off all the rods that they have. And I'm like, Oh my <laughs> God, get out of my shop. Where were you 10 years ago, guy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, great. Cool. So, and, 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 you know, it's, I don't know. I see a lot of, a lot of different kind of people. And, um, but for me, the heart, the hardest part is, is, is really getting out ahead uh, and managing inventory and product and not having too much stuff that I'm going to sit on or, or, you know, having enough product if something is really popular, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just basic, basic small business stuff. But 
um, you know, it, we're, we're a very small company. There's only three of us. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we all got to wear a lot of hats. And um, it can get difficult sometimes. But that's just that's just how it is. It's fun. The nature <laughs> of the small business. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's hard. It's hard. It's a, it's, it's a rough gig. Yeah, anybody that thinks running a small business is easy is out of the dang mind because it's not. It's not yeah. easy. Oh, yeah. I ran I ran a gym for five years until I sold it last November, and uh, oh. I got the same thing, man. It's like you you love fishing. You you know run a fly fishing shop. J- the dream easy. And I was like I like working out. I've been working out my whole life. I run a gym. Easy. No, it's not easy, man. I sleepless nights for five years, <laughs> like sleepless nights forever. It's small businesses insanely hard because it's not just it's like you work a hard job. You go home, you can kind of turn off. You know, the stress is definitely carry over for sure. Like so Paul's working nonstop right now. I imagine if he if he owned the uh, company that he worked for. I don't know if he'd be on this podcast with us right now. He might Absolutely not be living. Not. He might not be living. So not not to fault that at all, at all. Um, it's just it's a different kind of stress when it's like literally your pocket, like your your money, your livelihood, your home, like everything's kind of on the line. You know, you guys are running a, a three person shop. You know, like and this whole terrible situation has kind of put you. You know, you said no matter what, you're going to make it through it. I, I love the perseverance that you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. I think that's awesome. Um, but obviously, it's a stressful time, you know, and running a business is already stressful. So it's like, here we go. Let's plow through another terrible hurdle, right? Um, so, yeah, yep. we're, we're with you, man. The only thing you can do is just kind of put your, you know, put your head down and put your elbows up and just, you know, take what comes to you. That's all That's all that we can, all that any of us can do, you know. Yeah. Um, but it'll get better. It'll get better yeah. for sure. Should we hashtag grind, hashtag hustle? Hashtag, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> hashtag relentless <laughs> and all that other crap. <laughs> right, exactly. So, Lynn, let me ask though what I would consider maybe it's the harder question, but maybe it's the easier question. What's your favorite part about working in a flash shop? Oh, it's, it's cool. It's, it's cool being around the industry all the time you know if working at a fly shop affords me some pretty pretty cool opportunities you know it's probably no surprise i don't you know i'm not i'm not driving a lexus right but um (laughs) you know last year for instance i i have i have fishing licenses from five different states last year right so uh, you know we go go on trips and um we go to different shows I, i was a really lucky boy last year um, as far as where I got to fish and I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do that if it weren't for, uh, weren't for working at the shop. There's just no, no two ways about it. So you, you mentioned places you get to fish and that's actually one of the questions I've got on here because I feel like one of the things I've noticed trend wise in, in, in fly shops specifically, I don't know why they don't, do they, what do they, what do you call a conventional fish, a fishing store? What, like, what do you call, what do you what do you even call a sporting goods store? Do they? I'm gonna make up a kick-ass for, term for what? For like for a, a conventional. conventional shop? Yeah, what's the conventional version of that? It's like a tackle shop. Oh, a tackle. Sh- yeah. They're always called a tackle shop. Tackle shop. Yeah. There you go. All right. But what do you? I, one thing I've noticed: fly fishing store specifically shops. One of the way, one of the better ways to make money, especially if you're out west, is running guides services. Whether that's you running them or you setting them up and outfitting people, that sort of thing, or both, right? Um, right. Talk a little bit about what that looks like for the painted trout, because I feel like that's a selling point that goes either that's like the only thing someone knows about a fly shop or like someone is like not keyed into like how big of a deal that is, not only for the business, but like a way for you to like dip your toe into like saltwater fishing or like big time pike or something like that. So what we we do a couple things. So we run we run local guide stuff. Um, we have we have a couple of different guides that we that we partner with. Um, something we're also working working on expanding. Um, so there, there's there's a couple things in the works there um, that, that we're working on. Um, 
So we, we do a lot of the local rivers. Um, there's some other not quite as local rivers that we, we hang out on. Um, I don't want to spot burn too bad. So <laughs> we, we I will, to, I'm not, I would not do that to you. I would not put okay. that kind of pressure on you. Um, but you know, we do the here on obviously. Uh, but a lot of our business too, is we run, we do a lot of trips to kind of far flung locations that we partner with other outfitters. Uh, we go ourselves very, it depends on the trip. Um, last year we went to Cuba, uh, you know, which was, Sweet. I didn't go. Uh, but <laughs> Lauren it, went right. It was, oh yeah, yeah. She had. She said that she had the best fishing of her life five days in a row. Uh, wow. And that's an ex- that's someone with some experience talking. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She she's a she's an experienced traveler with with fishing, and um, this was probably the highlight of her of her fishing. So we do that. Um, unfortunately, I just had to pull the plug on this year's uh, trip to. Uh, the Deschutes River in Oregon hmm. uh, just had to cancel that. This, the state of Oregon um, stopped allowing out-of-state residents to fish. Yeah. So uh, that's a bummer because that that is that's just an absolutely epic trip. Uh, big fat foam dry flies, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> that's native rainbows taking them off the surface there's nothing like it but wow. legendary water that what's that it's legendary water yeah it is yeah there's no question about that um so we've got some other trips lined up but you know we're kind of waiting to see how this this whole thing um shakes out and you know how it's going to affect travel and oh did we just lose someone i think we're mm-hmm. good i'm on no we're good my window just changed. I no longer have Jeff. Oh, I'm we, don't need, we don't need Jeff. Not not important. I'm not hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, so yeah, t- let, me, that, let, me ask, let me ask you this, because I know I've asked you this. I think we've talked about this at the shop before. What is what is probably one of your favorite trips that you've gone on with the shop? Oh, the Oregon to shoot strip, period. Yeah. yeah no question. Yeah, that, that, that was... Probably the best fishing I've ever had. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was pretty intense. <laughs> I loved it, and we didn't we you know we we go there for the for the salmon fly hatch, um, and last year when I went, we missed the salmon flies, and it was still epic. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> it was, awesome. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So let me ask you this one too. Uh, are you, and I'm gonna ask everyone this: Are you a uh, a lip them and leave them, or are you a fish them and fry them? So are you catch and keep, or are you catch and release? So I I'm not hardcore either way. You know, I know there's there's probably a lot of people that are gonna have a hardcore answer for especially the catch and release side. Um, but uh, my if if I want to catch and keep a fish and eat it, I'm gonna, and I'm not gonna feel bad about it, even if it's a you know, even if it's a brook trout, um, mm-hmm. you know, the only time I'm not going to feel good about that is if I, if I poached it or if it was against regulations or, you know, whatever, but, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's some, some fisheries out there that can, that can benefit from, from, from keeping some of them, honestly, uh, especially some of the bigger fish, maybe even the really big fish that aren't really reproducing anymore, but maybe they're just eating smaller fish. Salmon um, in Michigan depends on the time of year. You got to get right. them out of there. Yep. Just I don't. I, I think a lot of times people go a little overboard with the with the uh, the catch and release thing. Um, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I release almost a hundred percent of the fish that I catch. Mm-hmm, I'm just mm-hmm. I don't I don't do that because I'm some, you know. I, I, I think that the, the, the purist of the fishery is going to depend on me not keeping this brook trout. Um, so yeah, no, I don't, I don't have strong opinions either way, to be honest with you. <laughs> I like it. Do you keep, do you keep out of the, out of the water right behind your house? I never have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to, but I, I've never have. So not going to want to. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So far, I think I'm probably one of the few. I'm probably a keep. I'm definitely way more on the keep side. Yeah. 
Oh, I keep a freezer full of. I keep. Uh, I I I probably try and keep all the panfish if I know I'm going to catch more than three. Like if I have a day where I catch a good one right off the bat, I'm probably just keeping for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I would do it uh, panfish if I had the room in the freezer and the time on my hands. And that's literally the only reason I don't like keep, if if anything. So I, I do like, I mean, yeah, probably the same as you. Like it's basically 100% catch and release, but that's only because like if I'm not camping with Paul, I know I'm not going <laughs> to cut it up and eat it because <laughs> usually i just i just make paul do that and then i, and then I eat it <laughs> but uh, but i'm all about it like there's nothing wrong with with keeping them at, at all but uh i just don't often <laughs> all right so i think that is that's that's the the end of the litany of the questions that i have um i know we we're through all on- the questions I we think we got it. through all the critical ones. We I've got did it two, this time. <laughs> I got three or four other ones that we could go through, but I think we hit the big ones. Um, Jeff, I will let you uh, impart any. Do you have any parting thoughts or questions for Neil? Uh, I think I think we hit a lot of good points. So I mean, I think at the end of the day, big big focus here: support your local shops. I think that's the big thing. That's that's the takeaway. Is I want you guys to support your local shops. A lot of them have moved online. And if you're a conventional fisherman and you haven't tried fly fishing or you're just like, ooh, I'm not going to do fly fishing, like look into it a little bit. Just watch some videos on YouTube. Somebody who makes it look dope. You know, like the the Yeti video, the GT call out was a good one. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but there was another one they did. There was uh, a kid that had a traumatic brain injury from a car accident and he he like fly fishes now. It's sort of like, his 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 moment of zen it like has really helped him with recovery that was a tear jerker but it was really good he just fly fishes like a local river um so that was really cool but yeah go watch some videos go check it out don't be afraid of fly fishing it's it's not as hard or complicated as you think it is as i hope neil has gotten this point across i think he has uh and you guys should definitely check out the painted trout so um i don't think i, I do do you have any other questions for him any other Hot topics. You said you had like three or four more. Oh, I could go on for hours. Hit the, hit the roulette. All right, <laughs> <Hit> the roulette. <laughs> okay. I mean, I got, I got, I got time. If you got something, something burning, go, go let's, for it. Let's get okay, it. I will, I will, I will ask, I will ask you this. I think a lot of people are standing on a bass boat, wondering how in the shit you cast from a boat. Oh man. Because that is not a video that like you go and look at. Like that is not a YouTube video that's just like out there for you to consume as general as everything else that's out there. Yeah, that's 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 a tough one, man. I I've never cast from a bass boat, but I'd love to. I got to imagine that's probably about the best situation for a boat for casting. I know it's just like a right? giant platform. Yeah, it's like a big salt flat salt <laughs> flat boat, basically. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I've never cast from one, but I got to imagine it's it's the best. And they're you know because that's what it's designed for. You're designed you know I, I would imagine I don't know anything about them, but um, you know you got to you get a lot of room to cast, a lot of room to walk around. You can manage your line on the floor there. Yeah. On the deck, right? Um, and you're low to the water. I mean, yeah. as long as you don't have like 87 other fishing rods on top of the deck, then then you're good. <laughs> But, you're not doing yeah. fly fishing right then. I will say that you're probably doing it wrong if you got 87 rods, or you're doing solid on the for the painted trout. One of the two. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Have you have yeah. you uh, have you gone fishing for reds? Since you, you mentioned know, the salt flats. We're, no? we're working on we're working on a trip for next year to Louisiana. Um, oh, red. For reds, yes. so we don't we don't have everything dialed in for that quite yet. But um, awesome. That's definitely up. My my bucket list for fish would definitely be would be reds. They don't even have to be big ones. I just no, <laughs> they look like so much fun, man. That'd um, be it. That's that's something I'd want to do for sure. Paul Trip, put it down. Put it on the calendar. I was gonna say. Well, okay. So then Neil, let me ask you. This was the other question I was gonna ask. Um, what is what is your preferred species to target? And then after that, what is on your bucket list outside of reds? Because I was gonna ask you that as well. I mean, I honestly, I like to kind of target anything that is 
close to where I am at the moment, right? So if I'm driving around and I see carp, I'm going to go after them. You know, if, if, if I want to get my trout fixed, I'll go to Mill Creek. I love trout. I mean, it's hard not to love trout, but um, I don't know that I, ha I really have a favorite quarry on the fly rod because they're all so different and they're all, every fish you catch is a little bit kind of a different experience. Um, That's why you got to have a favorite. I, I, love, <laughs> I love carp. Love carp. If you had to, if you had to pin me down and say most fun, on a fly rod it, it's a carp right? yeah. not, not because a lot of it is because of the way they fight right well they don't really fight they just run they just run yeah. run 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 right um but mostly they're just they're so smart and tricking them with a fly is really hard and one, super hard once you get it that's like, oh shit, I just stuck a carp and oh shit, he's a hundred yards away now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna watch that, backing, man. Yeah, you really do. And the and the greatest thing about carp is that they are everywhere. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can go catch carp. I don't care who you are, you can go catch carp. Right. I can't say that about giant bull trout, right? Yeah, Which is yeah. my bucket list fish. I can't say that about right. We can't go anywhere and catch giant bull trout. Right. Um, but I can get a carp anywhere. You can go on a carp. You're within, you got 10 lakes within 20 miles of you that, that all ha are chock full of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely are. They're just, they're just everywhere. Um, and the, you know, the, the, the best trick I've found for finding carp spots is go on the, go on the, the, uh, the bow fishing forums and see if you can get somebody to spot burn. Cause that's, oh. It that's, doesn't even, it's not even hard. They're just like, hey, right. do you know a lake? And they're like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't care. They don't right? care. Dude, they, both fishermen don't. So that's, uh, that is one of the things that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing hard to do some boat fishing this year. So we have a place on Lake St. Clair. Mm -hmm. Um, we're on the Canadian side and the water's been super, super high, which means we haven't seen, nearly as many bass up on the break wall. We haven't seen nearly as many silver bass, freshwater drum, like no walleye. Um, <clears throat> we are seeing a, even less now because there's not as much vegetation. We're seeing even less catfish right up on the break wall. We're seeing a ton of gar and we're seeing a ton cool. of carp. And we always see gar, but it's like usually just at night, like right at sundown. We're seeing them all the time now. Um, so I'm like, dude, if you're not going to give me anything else to do, I'm just going to go rail them from the break wall because all you need is a flashlight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, that'll keep you entertained for decades. That is what I'm <laughs> saying. That is, what, dude, I'm, I'm all, that is, that is on my, that is one of my, uh, that's my bucket list items for the year. I guess it's not a bucket list. Annual list. <laughs> <laughs> the mini bucket, man. It's the mini yeah. bucket. Yeah. Right. All right, Neil, awesome. I think we've uh, we've hammered you enough. Um, we really appreciate the time. I want to give you a chance to plug the shop one more time, so let us know what's coming this year and then where we can find you at. Well, we're just going to – we got to get through these current times right now, and we'll be we'll, – we'll come out swinging. Um, look for uh, look for a lot of tying materials coming out for those of you guys that are, that are into tying your own flies, which if you're not, you totally should be. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the only, the only, the only way that exists to, to completely control uh, what you're putting in front of that that fish's face, you know. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be there. We'll be doing trips. We'll be doing guide trips. So you know, we we appreciate everybody's support, and we appreciate you guys for giving us uh, giving us a little uh, a mouthpiece here to kind of talk about what we do. And um, so thank you guys. I really really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for being with us. We, we appreciate it as well. Awesome, man. Great having you on. And uh, guys, again, if you like the episode, be sure to subscribe to the Burley Fishing Podcast. Uh, you can give us a five-star review if you liked it and drop a comment to help us improve the show. Find us Instagram and Facebook at Burley Fishing and YouTube, Burley Fishing, and be sure to go to The Painted Trout. Uh, go check out their online shop right now. How far are you guys delivering? By the way, I didn't ask you that. Are you delivering? Dropping off? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're if if you place an order online, you're either going to get it dropped in your mailbox or sent to you in sent to you in the UP, USPS. So, yeah, we are open for business. Just 
not actually open. And once you hit the <laughs> web, and once you hit the website, you can see a badass uh, picture of Neil Bennett and Rod right there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you a secret about that picture. Um, so Should we stop hitting? That... Should we stop hitting record? <laughs> Is this no, a secret secret right. or a podcast secret? <laughs> I, I saw that picture up on the website and I was like, oh, wow, who put that up there? And it was my wife. And I'm like, you know, I was snagged in that picture, right? No! <laughs> <laughs> turn it right. off. Turn it off. Stop recording. <laughs> cut, so it, gotta, cut it. <laughs> she didn't know. I got to get I got to get I got to get that taken off the site. It's a cool shot. But it's um, a sweet picture. It's perfect for the banner. I love it. All right, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get you on a real fish next time. How about that? We're going we'll to replace. That's awesome. That's so good. Well, that's a great way to end this episode. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you next time.